This is concerning news. The FAA has officially opened an investigation into Flight 9. However, there is reason to believe any issues will be resolved quickly. Meanwhile, SpaceX has announced an ambitious launch target for this year. Can you guess how many missions they're aiming to fly? As a step toward that goal, they recently completed a GPS satellite deployment, demonstrating the unique capabilities of their rocket and setting a new record for rapid turnaround. Let's explore these developments in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Flight 9 wrapped up with plenty to unpack. Several objectives were surpassed, yet new issues also emerged. As a result, the path forward for Starship is now less predictable, especially given the Federal Aviation Administration's recent involvement. I had speculated that the FAA would refrain from launching an official investigation this time around. After all, their immediate post-Flight 9 statement emphasized that no injuries or property damage had been reported. However, that prediction turned out to be incorrect. The FAA has now issued a formal notice requiring SpaceX to conduct a mishap investigation for Flight 9. In its announcement, the agency stated the FAA is requiring SpaceX to conduct a mishap investigation for the Starship Flight 9 mission that launched on May 27th from Starbase, Texas. Hearing that another investigation is underway just as Starship appears poised to increase its launch cadence certainly adds uncertainty. SpaceX will need to allocate considerable attention in the upcoming weeks to satisfy the FAA's requirements and to implement any corrective actions for both stages of the Starship system. Naturally, this investigation will influence the schedule for Flight 10 and beyond. Despite the added scrutiny, there are reasons to believe this inquiry won't drag on indefinitely. The FAA's own update highlights multiple positive findings from Flight 9. First and foremost, the agency confirmed that all Starship vehicle and Super Heavy Booster debris landed within the designated hazard areas. There are no reports of public injury or damage to public property. In fact, the FAA activated a debris response area out of an abundance of caution when the Super Heavy Booster experienced an anomaly during its flyback toward Texas. They then verified that no debris had fallen outside the designated hazard zone. During that period, the FAA reported zero departure delays, one diverted flight, and one airborne flight held for 24 minutes. In other words, even though an unexpected event occurred, there was no harm to the public or other aircraft. Moreover, the FAA has clarified that the mishap investigation will focus solely on the loss of the Starship vehicle itself, which failed to complete its payload deployment and eventually flew in an uncontrolled manner. As the FAA's notice puts it, the mishap investigation is focused only on the loss of the Starship vehicle, which did not complete its launch or re-entry as planned. This narrow scope suggests a faster turnaround for investigative findings. After Flight 9, Musk publicly identified a fuel tank leak as the probable culprit behind the uncontrolled flight of Starship. That admission points the investigation directly at a known technical issue. Consequently, the FAA and SpaceX engineers can focus on analyzing tank integrity, plumbing, plumbing connections, and leak detection protocols without being sidetracked by unrelated anomalies. Meanwhile, the booster side of the mission will not be part of this formal mishap investigation. The FAA explicitly noted that the loss of the super heavy booster is covered by one of the approved test-induced damage exceptions requested by SpaceX for certain flight events and system components. The FAA evaluated each exception prior to launch approval and verified they met public safety requirements. The FAA's update specifies which Super Heavy Booster anomalies are acceptable, like grid fin failures during the landing burn, imperfect engine starts in the final landing sequence, and a hard water impact if thrust cuts off too late. For Starship, exceptions include engine failures during in-space or landing burns and malfunctions of the thermal shield or flaps during re-entry. These allowances acknowledge that testing a fully reusable system involves risks, yet still provides valuable performance data. However, the FAA explicitly noted that the loss of the Starship vehicle did not involve any exception. In other words, because Starship failed to meet planned mission objectives, such as deploying payloads, reactivating its engines in space, and returning under control, those aspects fall under the official mishap investigation. The booster's deviations, by contrast, were expected risks covered by previously approved waivers, so they do not trigger a separate inquiry. Given that the Flight 9 marked significant improvements compared to Flight 7 and 8, especially regarding the Super Heavy Booster's performance, SpaceX should be in a good position to complete the FAA investigation relatively quickly. On Flight 9, B-14 successfully executed its boost back burn, demonstrating that the engine igniter upgrades made following earlier failures are indeed effective. 
Meanwhile, Starship S-35 passed the ascent phase and achieved both engine cutoff in orbit and the planned aerodynamic flip maneuvers. Upgraded heat shield tiles performed well under the extreme conditions of ascent, and SpaceX even reported that it had regained control of S-35 after an extended period of uncontrolled flight. All of these positive results mean that the investigation is likely to zero in on a specific technical failure, namely the fuel tank leak, rather than an unknown systemic design flaw. Once engineers identify the precise failure mode, they can propose targeted fixes, such as improved welds on tank seams, additional leak check instrumentation, modified pressure regulators, or redesigned fill and drain valves. Following that, SpaceX can implement corrective measures on prototypes S-36 and B-16, which have already completed cryogenic testing in late February and early March. As soon as their Raptor engines are installed, the teams will move on to static fire tests, launch pad refurbishment, and final staging preparations. Because those hardware steps are already well underway, there is hope that Flight 10 can launch in the early to mid-June window that Musk indicated roughly three to four weeks after Flight 9. Of course, actual dates will depend on how long the mishap investigation takes, plus any required remedial work. Nevertheless, given the FAA's narrow focus and the limited public safety impact, a swift resolution seems entirely feasible. So do you think Flight 10 can still make a mid to late June launch? If so, respond June in the comment section down below. If you're feeling truly confident, go ahead and predict a specific date. Once you've shared your thoughts, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on SpaceX's rapid fire development journey. Starship is expected to hit a series of major milestones this year, pushing the boundaries of what's possible in spaceflight. However, while Starship development and testing remain a top priority, SpaceX is also working hard to strengthen its other launch systems, especially the Falcon rocket family. In fact, the company has set an ambitious new launch goal for 2025 that could further cement its dominance in the global launch industry. Anne Mason, SpaceX's Director of National Security Space Launch, revealed in a recent interview, we're targeting 170 launches by the end of the year. Although this figure is slightly lower than Musk's earlier target of over 180 launches, it still represents a huge leap forward compared to last year's already impressive total of 134 orbital launches, a goal of 170 is nothing short of extraordinary. To reach that number, SpaceX must maintain a cadence of roughly one launch every two days. As of May 30th, following the successful launch of the GPS-3 mission, the company had already completed 65 missions. That leaves 105 more to be executed over the remaining seven months of the year, requiring a modest increase in launch frequency as the year progresses. Mason commented on the company's rapid progress in launch cadence over the past few years, stating, I always find it amazing that this cadence has become somewhat normal, but if we look back just five years ago in 2020, we launched roughly 25 times, which was still a healthy rate, about twice a month. Now we're launching on average every two to three days. I think this demonstrates how Falcon's reusability and reliability, plus the hard work and dedication of the SpaceX team, have been critical to supporting assured access to space. Indeed, the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets have been pivotal in achieving this rapid turnaround. Thanks to the reusability of the Falcon 9's first stage, the most complex and costly component of the rocket, as well as the recovery payload fairings, SpaceX has been able to dramatically reduce launch costs and turnaround times. Although the upper stage of the Falcon 9 remains expendable, Mason noted that the company has optimized its production pipeline. We have a second stage coming off the production line every two and a half days. Most Falcon 9 launches currently support the Starlink satellite constellation, but the rocket also plays a critical role in a wide range of other missions. These include resupplying the International Space Station, deploying government and military payloads, and the launching of commercial satellites. For heavier or more distant payloads, Falcon Heavy remains SpaceX's go-to vehicle, offering greater lift capacity and flexibility. With its goal of 170 launches, SpaceX is once again showcasing not just the technical superiority of its rockets, but also its growing influence across the space industry. Industry. From commercial telecommunications to national defense and interplanetary ambitions, the company's launch systems are at the heart of nearly every major space initiative today. As SpaceX continues its march toward these ambitious targets, it's clear that the Falcon rocket family will remain a backbone of global space access, reliable, reusable, and relentlessly efficient. As a powerful demonstration of its unmatched reliability and flexibility, SpaceX's Falcon 9 has just completed a major mission that highlights its increasingly vital role in national security launches. 
At 1.37 p.m. Eastern, a Falcon 9 rocket launched from Cape Canaveral's SLC-40 carrying the U.S. Space Force's GPS-3 SV-08 satellite into orbit. Just over eight minutes later, its first stage, Booster B-1092, landed successfully on the drone ship a shortfall of gravitas in the Atlantic, marking its fourth flight, the 11th landing on that platform, and the 454th Falcon booster recovery overall, underscoring SpaceX's dominance in reusable rocketry. Roughly 90 minutes blah, 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 blah. roughly 90 minutes post launch the upper stage deployed the GPS3 SVO8 satellite supporting the US Space Force's modernization of the global positioning system built by Lockheed Martin the GPS3 series delivers 3 times better accuracy and is nearly 8 times more resistant to jamming vital for secure and reliable positioning data in today's contested space environment this was the 8th satellite in the GPS3 series which began launching in 2018 of the 10 of the 10 planned, only SVO2 launched on a ULA Delta IV. The rest have flown on Falcon 9. Both SVO7 and SVO8 were originally assigned to ULA's Vulcan, but were reassigned to SpaceX due to Vulcan's delays. The SVO8 mission stood out for its record-setting speed. SpaceX received the launch order on the 7th of March, 7th of March, and successfully launched by late May, just under three months. This shattered the previous five-month record, also set by SpaceX for SV07, and sharply contrasts with the typical 18 to 24-month prep timeline for national security launches. Colonel Jim Horn of the U.S. Space Force praised the rapid execution, highlighting its importance for future mission flexibility. Colonel Andrew Menschner added that the team could push timelines even faster with refined processes. Lockheed Martin acknowledged the milestone with a post-launch thanks for the lift, SpaceX, to which Musk replied, you're welcome. With its rapid integration, reusability, and consistent performance, Falcon 9 has become the backbone of both commercial and defense spaceflight. The GPS-3 SV-08 mission reinforces SpaceX's role as the industry leader in launch, responsiveness, and reliability. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.